So hello and welcome back to another geology video. So in today's video we have a geophysics data delivery system. So this is run by Geoscience Australia. And this has, oh you can actually have data from all over Australia. So this is our continent. Not too sure if it has Papua New Guinea. But the interesting thing about this is that you can... Uh, it's similar to Google Maps, probably a similar concept. So you've got these deep sea trenches. So this is the subduction zone. And this is the Solomon Islands. And here's a former subduction zone up north. Yeah, it has accreted to the Solomon Islands uh, group. And here we have another subduction zone over under here. And we have some transforming faults with uh, divergent plate boundaries. So, yeah, maybe that's for another video. But in today's video, we are looking at uh, the geological data. So, what you can actually put on, I have the Thorium uh, parts per million, and you can, so this is at 50%, so you've got 50% of the map, so you can see the background but you got 50% of the forum image. And what we are looking, if we look at the, uh, so the red is high, so you've got high sequence, and blue is low. So, so here we have the reference. So you've got red high, blue low. Okay, so now we know this, we can pick out some features that we want to find out. So obviously you can see that the Grampians, which is a sedimentary rock, uh, Silurian, uh, is deficient in forum. So it doesn't have how much forum, it's just deficient. And here we have a uh, granite, granodiorite batholith. So it's a volcanic rock and as you can see it has pretty high forum. So here we have lakes, obviously water bodies. So uh, they're going to be deficient in thorium unless they have an influx. Then we have the Rocklands Reservoir here. And here we have the Ro Black Ranges. So Rocklands. Bra Black Ranges, which is the same geological material as the Grampians. So the Grampians group. And then what's very interesting. Here we have my Napier. So if we just turn it down. So we've got Mount Napier. And we've got Mount Eccles, okay, Mount Eccles National Park. And what you can do, obviously you can't see anything that tree cover. You can increase it and you can see the lava flows. So the lava flow down south, also from here down south as well as all around. And as you can see, it's pretty low in for you too. And then you've got ever lava flows around here. The darker blues are the water bodies. So what is this down here? Let's have a look. Okay, we can't find anything. So this is agricultural land. So this might be sedimentary rock. You can't... Okay, so this port ferry. So this is sedimentary rock around here. But as you can see, the... The volcanics and the sedimentary rock uh, do overlap, so you can't really tell which is which. Okay, if we go down to Otways, Otways sedimentary rock, and as you can see, deficient in forium. And here what we look like, it looks like we have a, a series of retreating beaches. So, you need to check out the geology of that area. It's quite interesting. Obviously, you've got Lake Karangamite. We've got Geelong. And up here, we have a lot of volcanics, as well as a lot of sedimentary rock. But then we have the Baton granites. And here, what's this? This is very interesting. This is called the Cowbell Baffolith. So it has a series of uh, four different igneous rocks. So it has the... Rainy Creek Rhyolite, which is up here. Obviously, you can't see it. 
Then we have around here, this is the pylon S-type granite, so sedimentary granites. So that, that goes around there. And that was intruded by the Baton Pluton. Sorry, that's not the Baton Pluton, this one is. And as you can see, that's the fission forium, in which the pylon is high in forium. So that's how they've differentiated those two types of geological entities. This is, um, as far as I know, it's fine grain. And this is like a monso granite, so large crystallized granite. So obviously it cooled over a longer period of time. But it does have um, minor granodiorites and granites. And that's eye types, so igneous type granite. This is derived from the sedimentary rock. And down here, which we have the Bouvelet Pluton, uh, which is supposed to be a granite, granodiorite as well. Or Monzo granite. So they've actually divided it into two. I think the top half is a Monzo granite, and the bottom half is a finer grain granite where it's cooled a lot quicker. So, and that's supposed to be a sheet, it's supposed to have gone over the Bainton Pluton. So it's very interesting. I'll make a video of that in the future. And here's another igneous body, uh, which is very interesting. While it has a high forum content, and that is called the hard quartz granodiorite. It's the same age as this one. The Calbell Baffalith uh, and the geological setting for that is uh, quite complicated. But as you can see, it's like a teardrop with a tail around there. So that's how they've differentiated that from the surrounding sedimentary rock. So the surrounding rock is the Castle Main group, which is, you know, sandstone still its own to shale. So all different types of rocks. And then you know, around here we have uh, fluvial, so it doesn't separate the recent sedimentary rock, so the fluvial, colluvial, alluvium, uh, from the uh, siltstone and all that stuff that's about three to four hundred million years old. And down here we can see that that is a what is it, Archeon cauldron. So this is. Pretty much the uh, yeah ranges, got black ranges, and what we have here is um so this is the Merisil igneous complex. So that's very interesting. And up the top, up here, this is like the Hume Vale uh, siltstone. So obviously the volcanics seem to be depleted in Forium. Okay, so we can remove that one. And maybe we'll put on the uranium, see what that gives us. Add to map. So obviously you've got Warburton. So this is all of the Merisil, or well, a lot of it, Merisil Igneous Complex is uh, pretty much uh, a state park. So you need a four-wheel drive to go into there. And the uranium... Uh, okay, so the uranium has nothing. Then we've got the radiometric, so that's the filter potassium. Terrestrial dose rate, not too sure what that is. Okay, elemental forum. Okay, maybe he, this one, 2019. Parts per million. So this is the uranium. And the legend has it in... So the orange is 2000 parts per million and the purple is minus 800 parts per million it's so very deficient and as you can see this is probably because there's a lot of uh, soils and alluvium uh, it, it's been pretty much mixed up so we can't really define any other uh, geological features that we saw before in the, the forium. So the uranium is pretty mixed up. 
But what we can see is that this is deposits from uh, the retreating ocean when it was a lot uh, when this barrier has been built up by the Murray River. So obviously you can see the Murray River flowing. So the coastline was a lot further inland before. And you can see the former beach fronts. So that's one thing you can see on this map. That's what it defines. How about we go to, you know, can we see the beach front? Uh, now you can see where the actual sand barriers are. So that, that's what that is good for. Uh, but differentiating volcanic sedimentary rock doesn't seem you can do it with the uranium. So the igneous rock is a lot higher in elevation. So when that erodes, it probably just coats the uh, sedimentary rock with a layer of uranium. So, but here we can see a little bit of an outline of the Kalbal Batholith. So we've got the, once again, we have the pylon granites, like a, they have a slightly higher concentration of uranium. And here we have the Baton uh, Pluton, so grano, some granodiorites. And we can't make out really the Bovalet Pluton, which is, well, you can still make at the edge. But as you can see, the surrounding sedimentary rock uh, has a lot more uranium in it than a lot of the uh, igneous rock. So that's also very interesting. If we go down here, you can see a lot of the volcanic, so the basalts are deficient in uranium. How about we reduce it and we find so here we have the two national parks, got Mount Ethel's here, Mount Napier, State Park. And as you can see, they're also deficient in Thorium too. So it looks like the igneous, intrusive igneous rocks, so the granites, granodiorites, have higher Thorium. Uh, the basalts have lower uranium, should I say, not Thorium, uranium. So that is very interesting. Uh, and also the Otway's sedimentary complex is deficient. So, oh, if we pull out the map, you can see a lot of this seems to follow river flow patterns. So you can see the Murray River has a high uranium content. The lakes have low uranium content obviously uranium settled to the bottom and it's not in the actual water column but here this is flowing so it constantly would pick up newer uranium and the peters out here so obviously it's losing a lot of its uh, uranium somewhere around this point very interesting very very interesting if we go to central australia Flat plains, oh, this is all limestone, definitely low uranium. And I'm not too familiar with the geology of most of this area, but a lot of it is sedimentary, a lot of it is igneous. So that is an interesting thing to look at. And obviously, the mountains are very high in uranium. So I hope this helps you with your geology. Uh, so yeah, go to Geophysical Archive Data Systems. Uh, so this is Geoscience Australia. It's very interesting to play with something like this. Okay, so if you want to use another map, maybe we can Uranium Forium. You can see what that comes up with. So this is the ratio of uranium to thorium. And no. It says I had a map, but no, nah, didn't have a map there. 
Okay, so maybe uranium to potassium. And once again, this this doesn't work a hundred percent. It says it's got the maps, but then it just doesn't load them, and the maps just disappear. Uranium two to four, and would it actually load? Okay, so what you can do is just refresh the map and see what happens. So we've got layers again, geophysics, radiometrics, and let's see if we can load. No. Sometimes it's just not going to load, so maybe come back another time. Anyway, potassium. No, obviously the system's playing up. Anyway, hope this helps you with your geological work and have awesome, well, time alone about geology. Thank you and goodbye.